Hi, and welcome to First Year Microeconomics. In this presentation, we're going to start constructing our perfectly competitive market model. We're going to start by representing an individual's demand. The first point is that there's three ways to do this. We can do this using a table, by a graph, or we can do it mathematically. Now, in this first presentation, we're going to be using a graph to represent an individual's demand. That graph is going to be called the individual's demand curve. So secondly, let's give our formal definition. A person's demand curve. Notice we're starting by an individual person. Later on in the course, we're going to be looking at market demand curves, but for the moment, we're thinking of one person and their demand. So a person's demand curve for a product, our product here is going to be apples, shows, given the price, notice that we've got our price-taking assumption for buyers built in to the demand curve. The demand curve only makes sense when we have our price-taking assumption. Given the price of the product, how much of the product would that person like? That's also important. The demand curve tells us what people would like to do or what they would plan to do. It doesn't tell us what they will necessarily be able to do in a marketplace. In fact, later on in the course, we're going to look at many situations where individuals can't choose the point that they would like on their demand curve due to some other constraint. Finally, we're going to be holding all other relevant factors fixed. Remember, this includes the person's income or their wealth, the prices of other goods such as bananas or pears, their expectations, are apples good for them, or do they think that apples are bad for them, and so on. Anything else that could be relevant is held fixed. A person's demand curve for a product shows, given the price of that product, how much of the product that person would like to buy, holding all other relevant factors fixed. A third point is one of our helpful assumptions. Demand curves generally slope down. That's the way we're going to be drawing them in this presentation. So, the first thing we need to do is identify our person. Our consumer is going to be Jackie. She's going to have a demand for apples. She's a student. She has an income of $120 per week in her part-time job. And she likes apples. But she also likes eating some other things, such as bananas, which sell for $5 per kilogram. We're going to be holding the price of bananas fixed when we draw the demand curve for apples. And she also likes to eat apple pie and ice cream. Ice cream is going to be a product that she likes to have with apples. For the moment, we're going to be holding the price of ice cream fixed. To draw our demand curve, we need some axes. So I'm going to draw a standard set of axes that you would have seen hundreds of times in high school mathematics. On the vertical axis, we're going to have price, so price is going to be our variable on the y-axis, and on our horizontal axis we're going to have the quantity of apples that Jackie would like to buy. And we're just going to ask the same question over and over again to draw her demand curve. Given the price, how many apples would Jackie like to buy? So let's pick a first price, let's pick a nice high price to start off with, say $12 per kilogram, and let's suppose that if we said to Jackie, Jackie, Apples are $12 per kilogram. How many would you like to buy? She'd say, well, look, that's just too expensive. I don't want to buy any apples at $12 a kilogram. Well, in that case, we'd have a point up here where the price is $12 per kilogram and the quantity is at zero. That's going to be our first point on Jackie's demand curve. So here's the first point on Jackie's demand curve, up here. Okay, let's change the question. Suppose we said to Jackie, Jackie, apples are $9 per kilogram. How many would you like to buy? She says, gee, mine's still expensive, but you know, I really like apples. So at a price of $9 per kilogram, I'm happy to buy, say, 4 kilograms of apples. Well, that's going to give our second point on Jackie's demand curve. It's just going to be this point up here. A price of $9, she wants to buy 4 kilograms of apples. So here's the second point on Jackie's demand curve. Suppose we ask Jackie another question. Jackie, if apples are $7 per kilogram, how many would you like to buy? Well, remember by our assumption, our helpful assumption, when the price goes down, we would expect Jackie to either buy the same amount 
or to buy more apples. She probably wouldn't buy less apples. So if the price comes down to seven, we'd expect Jackie to say, hey, I'd like to have, and to name some number, at least four. Let's suppose she says five. Let's suppose Jackie says, hey, at the price of $7 a kilo, that's starting to get decent. Look, I'm happy to buy five kilograms of apples at a price of $7 per kilogram. That would be my plan. If the price was $7 per kilogram, I would like to buy five kilograms of apples. So here's our third point on Jackie's demand curve. Let's ask Jackie another question. Hey Jackie, let's suppose the price is only $4 a kilogram for apples. How many kilograms of apples would you like to buy in a week? Well, Jackie might say, look, gee, $4 a kilogram is starting to get really good price, but you know, I like apples, but I can only eat so many apples in a week. So you know what? Yeah, I'll have a few more apples than if the price was a bit higher, but not that many more. So Jackie might say, hey, I'll have five and a half kilograms of apples if the price is $4 per kilogram. So here's another point on Jackie's demand curve. Now, we could keep asking Jackie these questions. Given the price, how many apples would you like to buy? We could keep doing that all day if you really want, but I guess you guys have something better to do with your time. So let's skip ahead. What we'll end up with is a whole bunch of points that will make effectively a line. And that line will go through all of the points that we've said so far. So it will start up here with a price of $12. She doesn't want any apples. We'll go through our points down here. And it may shoot off some direction. And eventually we'd expect it to cross the horizontal axis. There'll be some price or some maximum amount of apples that Jackie would want even if the price was zero. So we now have Jackie's demand curve for apples. Notice that it's drawn given her income, which was $120 per week, given the price of bananas, which was $5 per kilogram, and so on. Remember it was drawn holding everything else fixed. What this demand curve tells us is, given the price, how many apples would Jackie like to buy? And we've now solved that demand curve for every possible price that Jackie could face.